Hi, I'm Kirby, and welcome to Lion's Roar, Georgian Court University's online guide to financial aid. If you've been following along so far, you know how to get through most of the free application for federal student aid, or FAFSA. But there's one section that can look more complicated than it really is. The FAFSA needs all sorts of tax information from students and parents to help determine how much aid students are eligible for. But tax forms can be confusing and complicated, and this is not some place you want to make a mistake. Fortunately, there's a way to automatically answer most of the FAFSA's questions about your taxes. It's called the IRS Data Retrieval Tool, or DRT. Only 30% of the people who could use the DRT actually do, and it could save you a lot of time and aggravation. Not everyone can use the DRT, though. At the beginning of the Financial Information section, you'll answer a few questions to see if it will work for you. The first question is, have you filed a tax return for this year? The DRT pulls data from your tax return that the IRS has on file, so if you haven't filed a return, you're out of luck. Sorry. The next question is about your filing status. Are you single or married filing jointly? You can use the DRT. If you're married but filing separately from your spouse or filing as a head of household, you can't use the DRT. The last question is about what kind of return you file. Are you filing a Puerto Rican tax return, a foreign tax return, or amending your tax return with the 1040X form? If any of these apply to you, you can't use a DRT. Remember, the FAFSA needs this information from both parents and students. It might be that one of you can use the DRT and the other can't. For instance, if the student files a single, but the parents are married and file separately, the student could use the DRT, but their parents could not. If after answering these questions, you can use the data retrieval tool, click the button that says Transfer from IRS. You'll see a window that reminds you that you're leaving the FAFSA website. Click Proceed. The next screen you'll see will be on the IRS end of the DRT. Fill out the filer's information. Make sure you know whether the FAFSA wants the student's or the parent's information. The name, social security number, address, and everything else must exactly match what's on the tax return. Once the system finds the return, it'll ask for your permission to transfer the information to the FAFSA. And voila! You'll see the next few questions on the FAFSA are already filled in with transferred from the IRS. Even though most of the questions have been taken care of, there are a few things that won't be transferred. You'll have to answer these questions manually. Make sure to read each one carefully so you know what is being asked. Most of the answers are things that wouldn't be on your tax return, like untaxed income. Untaxed income doesn't just mean Social Security disability or income benefits. It also includes things like combat pay, college grants, scholarship aid, or AmeriCorps benefits. If you don't know what a term means or have never heard of a particular form, it probably doesn't apply to you. If you've never seen a Schedule K, for instance, you can just put zero for that answer. Be especially careful when filling in pension and retirement fund contributions. If your contribution is just reported on your W-2, the DRT won't transfer it. You'll have to put that in manually. Things can get a little confusing with parent information, too. Parents are identified by their first initial and last name. So if your parents have the same initials, you'll want to check, say, their birth date to make sure you know who is being referred to. If your parents have the same initials, same birth date, same social security number, and are the same person, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> If you have any questions, our financial aid advisors are here to help. You can contact them at financialaid@georgian.edu. I hope the IRS data retrieval tool makes filling out the rest of the FAFSA a lot easier. We're not quite done yet, though. We need to make a way for you to identify yourself when you fill out the FAFSA again next year. It's called an FSA ID. Check out the video below to learn more.